doing at uh, the year 86. I'm, uh, for the last 12 years, I'm working as a paramedic. I've seen a lot of scenes in the, since 86. A scene like today, I was never at. Um, I've never seen. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Seven o'clock in the morning, I had to meet a friend of mine. I got to meet him. And uh, as I'm talking to him, um, he, he gets on his radio a call. We have an on neighborhood in Hanoff. We have an ambulance that's connected together with Mata. Uh, we have um, 24 hours. Um, we have a crew that with paramedics, EMTs, that we give uh, whatever Mata sends us, any calls, and for our neighborhood. Uh, I'm standing, I'm talking to him, and he gets on his radio a call that's a shooting on a street called Agassi. So I asked him to find out if it's only like one bullet someone shot by mistake. Or shooting, he says, no, there's shooting. We're about four or five hundred meters from, uh, from the scene. We got into his car, we got there in, in seconds we were there. What we see, we see a guy sitting outside with his talus, his tefillin, gushing blood. I ran over to him, uh, asked him what happened. He said, I was shot. I picked up his shirt to see what his wound was. I see tremendous cuts on his back, on his chest. His ear was chopped off. I told him, are you sure you were shot? Because it looks like you were cut. Now in the shoe that he came out from, there's a hole downstairs. And people make, um, make all kind of uh, parties over there. So I thought maybe there was a party that morning and one of the workers over there went crazy, took his knife and he said, no, they're shooting in the building. So what I did, uh, I, I called our dispatcher to tell him what the scene, what's going on. And she asked me to please try to see what's going on on the scene because it's not clear. I told her, okay, EMT started coming. I told him to take care of this guy in the meantime. And me and another volunteer paramedic called Yanki Eli, we started going up the steps to, to get to the first hall in front of the shul. And what we see was a body lying on the floor, a big puddle of blood, and this morning I forgot my gun. So I walk in, and I didn't know where it's gonna come from. And I get to this guy, I drag him right away by his pants, I pull him out, and we turn him over, we see that not much to do, and we started talking what, what we do, and suddenly I hear shooting right behind me. I jumped the steps right out to get to a cover that I could get out of the line of the fire, and I hear behind me, my friend Yankee, I hear him jumping and I hear him scream. I thought he was shot. I turn around to see what happened, he broke his ankle from jumping off all these steps, and he was right in the line of fire, and I see bullets coming out and going right over him. I went out of the cover where I was, I grabbed him by his shoulders, dragged him to where I was. At that moment, the cops came, and they, they surrounded the front of, uh, of the, the, the entrance to the, to, the sh to the shul. And then I hear, uh, I, like, I, I peeked out to see what was going on, I hear this, I hear something flying out, I, I couldn't see what it was, and I hear the Allah Wakba, and all the cops started shooting all around. As, like, as that was happening, the, um, I see a, a cop collapsing, and I see the uh, cop turning around, shooting the, the terrorist that came jumping out from these stairs. I ran over, the, the fire was still going, I ran over with another guy to this uh, cop. We dragged him to the cover where we were that he doesn't get hurt again. Uh, I saw he was very badly wounded. Um, basically what we did is we lift him up, I saw the intensive care unit started coming, the ambulance started coming down the road. Uh, we lift him up and we just ran towards, uh, uh, towards the intensive care that we could start taking care of, uh, of this cop. Um, what was happening inside, basically, they came in with, I guess, this guy had a gun, they had an axe, 
They were running around with an axe. They, the, shul, the opening of the shul is in the back, so they couldn't even see them when they walked in. So no one knew they were coming in. So they just walked in, they took the axes, and people were just butchered. On their chairs, with the talis, with the tefillin, there was a guy that his arm was chopped off, his head was, was hanging there, he was still alive. Uh, and we got him out also. Um, the shul was, it was one big pool of blood. That, that's basically what was going on there. Um, what happened was I continued taking care of this cop. I, uh, uh, I intubated him. Uh, I got him on to another, to an ambulance that was coming because the first intensive care unit took the, the first guy that I met and they took him off and I, uh, I went with this, with this uh, policeman, I took him to uh, Sharet Tzedek. The scene was, I came home, I told my kids, my, my son was home, you have a lot of luck, your father's still alive. I was right in front. There was no one before me. The next thing that I had to meet, that I didn't know. I know this building, and I didn't know that the, the shul that they were davening was straight ahead. I thought it was, there was another one on top. There's a bigger one on top. I thought that's, that, that's where they were. The terrorist was right behind the door. And when we dragged this guy and he heard the conversation, that we were going, you know, what's his position? He opened the door, and we, uh, we weren't looking at him. We, we were on an angle that we couldn't see the door, and he started shooting us. Uh, I don't know what to say. This, it was a bad, very bad scene. Innocent people in a synagogue just being attacked from the back uh, without any threat, any... What happens now is if I have to start finding myself sitting when I go to shul, I have to hide around the wall because if someone will attack, so maybe I could attack him back, maybe I could um, uh, run away. Uh, I told my kid when he took off to school today, I told him, listen, when you stand in, in um, bus stops, you don't stand with the crowd, move away, try to find a, a wall or something that could protect you, maybe someone will come with a car or anything, uh, I have to start walking on Shabbat, taking my gun with me. We had a guy in shul that for years has his gun, we made fun of him. It's getting real. It's getting, it's getting bad and getting real. Uh, we have to uh, start looking in the back, seeing what's happening everywhere. It could be in, when you go to the grocery, you could go anywhere where you're standing in line. You never know uh, what will attack you. And from what I heard, that these guys worked around so they knew the neighborhood. Um, I guess they knew this shul and they knew how to, uh, how to enter it. They knew where each floor was going on, what time they dove in, what time. It was a bad scene, a very bad scene. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Akiva.